This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is a Star Wars children's toy, and this is a jet engine. A real jet engine. Now the Star Wars children's toy looks like it has jet engines, and in the movies, it sounds like it has jet engines. But this toy doesn't actually have jet engines. And I think you get where I'm going with this. But getting a real jet engine, attaching it to a children's toy, and having it not, you know, destroy itself, is quite a story. And this is how it all started. Having just finished my Minecraft furnace thermoelectric generator, I was exhausted. And now, I desperately needed to blow off some steam. Then I remembered this unique experience that I had a year ago in the desert. My friend Louis Weiss and I strapped a real jet engine to a Radio Flyer wagon and set some speed records. Once you've heard and felt the insane roar of a real jet engine just inches away from all your vital organs, well... Dude, that was insanity! That was such a rush! That was so awesome! It's a pretty special feeling, and I was ready to feel that feeling again. There's just one problem. I don't have a jet engine. But I'm sure Lewis wouldn't mind letting me borrow his. And thankfully, Lewis was just a short drive away getting ready to launch a giant paper airplane off the stage at Flugtag. You know, that Red Bull event where people launch crazy crafts off a ramp into the water. And it's a good thing I went because Lewis was totally able to hook me up. So Lewis, do you have your jet engine? Dude, no, I don't. What do you mean? You I didn't, didn't bring, bring it along? It. I didn't bring it. Uh, uh, hey Daps, what's up? I have a jet engine. Oh, do you want to come with me? Sure. Take my hand. Yeah, so this random YouTuber named Daps was there, and for some reason he actually did have his own jet engine. So I brought him back to my basement to get to work. But before we mounted the engine, or even messed with the wheels, we wanted to get a baseline test of the land speeder. And it turns out that the previous owner had installed a basic radio control kit. Man, this is glitchy. Burnout! The stock motors worked decently enough, so we tried putting Daps on it. Are you ready? Yep. The performance was overwhelming. Ah! But for some reason, we decided we still wanted to go the jet engine route. I think it needs a jet. It needs the jet. Now the top priority in any collaborative project is division of labor, which is basically just a fancy phrase that I'm using to justify my pawning off of all the hard work onto daps. Now I don't have access to a giant flat desert, so doing a top speed test just isn't feasible right now. But I had another idea. I had seen a video where a guy named Adam Woodworth had mounted a land speeder body to a Razor drift cart. And this makes sense. The land speeder hovers, and hovering things tend to move around all floaty since they are disconnected from the ground. The casters in the drift cart create a similar floaty effect since instead of just going forward, they follow the path of the cart's momentum whichever direction that is. I considered doing a hovercraft, but we only had a few days to complete this transformation, and I recently learned from my friend JT at the channel Built IRL that jet engine powered hovercrafts are very difficult to control. Of course, I did overlook some of the key design elements of the drift cart in my haste, which made for some interesting test results, but we'll come back to that. I wanted the land speeder to sit lower to the ground because it just looks cooler. So after removing the wheels, I mounted some casters to reinforce brackets as high up into the underside as possible. For the front, we ended up mounting some Razor scooter wheels to some shafts that were hose clamped to the larger original shafts. We also needed to extend the steering range since it was pretty severely limited, so we cut the limiting pins off. Mounting the jet engine was actually the easy part. All we had to do was cut off the fake one, and then cut an adapter plate on my CNC to mount to the plastic, and then cut some more aluminum L brackets. Ooh, what do you think? We stole the gas tank off my snowblower and stuck it under the seat, and it would have fit perfectly, except that the cap stuck up too high and we couldn't close the seat cover. I don't know, are we gonna like, just, we can just cut out the bottom a bit, or... Okay. At this point, our comfortable and newly canonically accurate land speeder would be ready for oh. its first run at a really? test site. Can't even tell. But who would be crazy enough to give us a test site? What? Oh, 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 oh. oh, I touched it. Oh my gosh. That is so freaking cool. Dude, I have always wanted to see one of these. Oh, I'm excited, dude. I can't, yeah, whatever. My shop is your shop. Whatever the <laughs> hell you guys need so I could just be a part of this, let me know. The land speeder needed a few finishing touches before we could fire it up. But once we mixed the fuel with the oil and hooked up the electronics, we were finally ready to run into our first big issue. No device connection, which is weird because it's clearly 
power, I mean the power is going to the device. Now I didn't feel like spending all day troubleshooting, so I just decided to pull over and ask for directions. I'm gonna call Matt from uh, Warped Perception. Matt is a turbine expert who does crazy stuff over on his channel, and he was able to give us the highly technical advice necessary to get such a complex system functioning optimally. Oh, oh no, yeah, okay, worked. okay, we were reversed. Thanks to Matt, we could finally fill the tank and start up the turbine. Ignition. Yo. This has got stupid written all over it. Oh, I can hear it. <laughs> Yo, it actually smells like, you can smell it. There's a flame at the back. Now the thing with a turbojet is, once you think it can't get any louder, oh, it's loud. It does. I'm gonna give it full throttle as a test. I think you get the idea. And now that it was running, all we had to do was pick the test pilot. Do you want to go first? Me? Right. You got a fire extinguisher? I do. So you might want to have it handy in case I start on fire. It was thrilling to finally be piloting this insane children's toy. And I'm happy to say that it handled well. It actually handled, like, really well. Within seconds of getting behind the wheel, I was pretty sure that this might just be the best possible steering system ever. This is the worst possible steering system ever. Let's lock the rear casters and just try and steer it normally. The people that are driving by are just like... With the rear casters duct taped poorly in place so that they couldn't swivel, I finally started gaining something resembling control over the vehicle. And now that I had some hands-on experience, I was starting to come up with some better ideas for the rear wheels. That was not bad. That I think that awesome. we can drift it by just having like the slidey tires in the back. I'm totally getting <laughs> Like I'm going home and I'm gonna like order one. Unfortunately, the engine started acting up again and we had to call it a day before Daps could get his turn. That evening back at home, I got the sense that he was disappointed. I'm disappointed. There was just no way that I, in good conscience, could let him go back home without having experienced what it was truly like to be a dirty moisture farmer back on Tatooine. So the next morning, I swapped the rear wheels for the original front hard plastic ones and the fronts for some grippier Harbor Freight lawnmower wheels. I even installed a solenoid powered brake for the rear wheels, though I wasn't sure how well that it would work. After working all morning and with Daps' bus coming to get him in the evening, it was now or never. Thinking back on all the hard work, the planning and attention to detail, the rigorous training and self-discipline, it all led to this epic moment. Ready! Daps carefully taxied away from the start line turning around, lining up, and finally unleashing the full power of this. Uh-oh. I didn't do anything. Okay, so there were a few more kinks to work out, but nothing serious. How'd it feel? Good, my legs are cramping. And once we got Daps his booster seat, he finally got his moment in the twin suns. Ah. So is it, I mean, is it everything you dreamed it would be? Yeah. Except not comfortable? Oh yeah. <laughs> and he wasn't the only one, because we just had to let David take it for a spin. Oh yeah, David! Right. Dude, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Alright, yeah, I'll try it. Yeah! <laughs> this is too much fun! Oh yeah, the people I bought the Land Speeder toy from, they were actually so curious that they came out to see it run. Heck, even my cameraman Quincy just had to have a turn. The hard plastic tires worked well, though a teeny bit more grip would have been nice for better drift. But it was a blast to ride, and it drew a lot of attention. And then I heard it, and I'm like, that's awesome! Can you imagine what would happen if I put three jet engines on this thing and did high speed testing on a runway or in the desert? If this video gets enough likes, comments, and subscriptions, then maybe you won't have to imagine it. I can't imagine if you just left this thing oh. pinned, this thing would zoom. Oh, this thing would be dangerous. And of course, I couldn't do projects like this without the help of people like today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful, beautiful online platform for creating your website and fostering an online community. Their fully integrated commenting system supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. They also connect you with your audience to generate revenue through gated members-only content. You can manage your members, send emails, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. 
Their powerful blogging tools can categorize, share, and schedule your posts, and you can display posts from your social profiles on your website, as well as automatically push website content to your social media channels for your followers to share. They even have new third-party Squarespace extensions to help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash joelcreates to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks, Squarespace. Now, if you're not subscribed to DAPS or to his maker channel, DAPS2, you really should be. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to everyone who made this video possible. I'll see you next time.